Maybe your marathon is quickly approaching or you are just curious about what you need to pack in your race bag for race day. So I'm going to discuss and show you the items that I recommend putting in your race bag on race day. The first item that I recommend that you put in your race bag on race day is the shirt that you plan to wear during the race. I highly recommend like a running tank top, something like this, or like a running short sleeve shirt. So something that's going to be for warmer weather and also for a backup or if it's going to be cooler weather, so bring a shirt that is going to be long sleeves. So I would pack them anyways, just in case, just to be safe, I would pack both. So if there is no doubt in your mind that maybe the race is going to be a warmer race, so you know for a fact that the weather is going to be 60 or 70 degrees at the start line and it's just going to continue to warm up, you're probably going to be safe just to pack a tank top or a short sleeve shirt. So something that is going to be for warmer weather, you'll probably be safe if you just pack that. Now, if the weather is in between that, so if it's going to be like 40 or 50 degrees at the start, so sometimes it's possible that the temperature will drop throughout the race. So you want to have a long sleeve shirt if that's going to happen. And if it's kind of in between weather where it's kind of like, uh, it might be kind of chilly at this race or maybe it might be warm. The weather is kind of supposed to fluctuate. The temperature might fluctuate. I would bring both just in case. And if you're in doubt, it's never going to hurt to bring a short sleeve and a long sleeve shirt. So I would just go ahead and pack those items in your bag just in case. So just put them in there. It probably won't take that much room in your bag anyways. So make sure you bring a couple race day shirts, one for warmer weather, one for colder weather. I always try to wear a tank top if possible during the race. But if I know that the race is going to be really chilly at the end, like if it's going to be only a high of 50 degrees at the end of the race, I would maybe consider wearing a long sleeve shirt. So if you're starting at the race and it's going to be like 20, 30 degrees, 40 degrees maybe, and it's not going to warm up much, I would wear a long sleeve shirt during your race. But it's all personal preference. Some people love to be free and not have a long sleeve shirt or some people like to be extra warm and they don't really care if they get a little sweaty so bring a long sleeve shirt for sure especially if that's probably going to be the conditions of the weather bring a tank top or short sleeve shirt along as well my next recommendation to you is to bring arm warmers so if the weather is going to be between temperatures it's going to be chilly at the start but so if it's, the weather is going to be warmed up to 50 to 60 degrees at the end Maybe think about wearing arm warmers with your tank top. So you just pull the arm warmers on your arms just like that. You pull them up here. Put your arm warmers on and then your shoulders and your armpits are cooled off better because that is usually the sweatiest part when you are running where you get really hot is in your armpit area. So you might get chilly on your lower arms past your armpits. So highly recommend arm warmers, especially if you're in between temperatures and you really don't want to wear a long sleeve shirt and you might want to pull them down towards the end of the race. Or you might want to pull them down because you might get too warm. So when you get warm, you just pull them down. Pull them down to your wrist. What I, and then you can just run with them like that. They're really not that bothersome. They actually kind of come in handy. If you're getting sweaty a little bit, you can always rub your sweat off just like that. It's a good way to wipe your sweat off too. So that is one thing I highly recommend that you get for your race is some arm warmers, especially during those fall months and spring months. You're probably going to like to have some arm warmers. So I would put that in your race bag as well. So the other thing, if you are a woman, you don't want to forget is a sports bra. So you want to have a sports bra in your bag for good support during your race. So put that in there. Make sure you don't forget that because you don't want to run without one for sure. My next recommendation for you is running shorts. Make sure you don't forget your running shorts. So 
I try to wear running shorts if possible during the race because I like to wear shorts to run in better than I do pants. But that's just my personal opinion. But I usually wear shorts. If it's going to be 45 degrees or over during the race, I will wear shorts unless that I know that the temperature is going to drop during the race. So if it's like 40 degrees at the start and it's going to be like 35 degrees at the end of the race, I would consider wearing pants. I would definitely bring a pair of pants also. So it's never going to hurt, just like the tank top and the long sleeve shirt, it is never going to hurt to bring both along with you. So if it's the summer months and it's going to be like 60 or 70 degrees at the start, yeah, you're probably gonna, not going to have to bring pants with you if you don't want to. Or if it's, and if you know that maybe the weather is going to be super cold, like it's going to be 20, 30 degrees at the start, and it's not going to warm up past 40 degrees, bring pants. So it never hurts just to pack both anyways. So I would pack both. If you are kind of in between temperatures and you like capris, capris might also be a great option for you too. So you could pack that. So just put that in your race bag. Make sure you don't get forget that. That's a very important item as well. The next thing that you want to pack in your race bag that you absolutely do not want to forget is your running shoes. It, this is actually could possibly be an easy thing to forget. You pack your bag, you have it all packed up, and then you put it in your car and you forget to put your running shoes on top of the bag yeah, you could possibly forget your running shoes. I mean, there's always a way. You probably could go buy some, but that's probably not ideal. I always pack my race bag at least the night before I'm getting ready to leave for the race. And I always put my running shoes on top of my bag after it is packed because I absolutely do not want to forget my running shoes. Or sometimes I'll even wear my running shoes so I don't forget them. But I always like to have a pair of sandals or some sort of recovery shoes that I can wear. So I'm not always wearing my race shoes because after the race, you really want to take your running shoes off a lot of times because, you know, your feet are a little sore. Maybe they have some blisters going on. Or you just want your feet to air out a little bit after that long 26.2 mile run. So definitely don't forget your running shoes. My, another thing that you want to pack in your race bag is a pair of socks for the race. You definitely want a pair of socks before the race because you don't want to wear your running shoes without socks. So put that in your bag. Make sure you have a pair of socks at least. Maybe bring a couple just in case. So that's another item that you definitely want to have in your bag. So the next item that I recommend bringing in your bag is a pair of gloves, especially if it's that fall, winter, or spring month that you're running a marathon. You probably want a pair of gloves. It never hurts to have them in there just in case anyways. Even if it's 50 degrees at the start, believe it or not, your hands get really cold pretty easily when you run, especially at the start of the line. So you might even wear a tank top and have your arm warmers on and have some gloves on because, yeah, your fingers get pretty chilly. And it is not fun at all to have cold fingers. They get really, they hurt when your fingers are cold. They get red. So don't forget a pair of gloves, especially if you know that the weather is going to be chilly at the start of the race. So make sure you put those in your bag too. Another thing that you want to put in your race day bag is a headband for cold weather, if it's going to be chilly, that is. So if you know that it might be 50 degrees at the start line, just kind of like the gloves. The guideline for the headband is a lot like the gloves because your ears are another part of your body that get really cold easily too. So definitely want to have a race day headband especially if you know it's going to be like 50 degrees at the start line, bring that with you. That's going to keep your ears warm. My next recommendation for you, if you have long hair or need to put your hair up in a ponytail because it's somewhat long, make sure you bring ponytails. I would bring more than one ponytail. I know I'm showing you one right now. I would at least bring three ponytail holders. The reason why is because sometimes when you put your hair up, your ponytail holder breaks. And how frustrating it would be if you didn't have more than one as a backup or more than two as a backup, just in case. So make sure you bring a ponytail holder with you because I don't like to run with my hair down. My next recommendation for you, make sure you bring a running hat with you. I like this one because it has zippers on the side. I can put my sports gel in here. 
and I can, it's a storage compartment. And also, these are nice, especially if it's going to rain on you. It's not fun to get rain in your eyes because it can burn your eyes and you can't see as well. So bring a hat along with you and make sure you put that in your bag. My next recommendation for you is to bring a running belt with you. So this is a running belt. You have storage compartments for your gels or any other item that you want to carry with you. So you can have storage compartments for that, and it just snaps around your waist, just kind of like a fanny pack, except it doesn't look like a fanny pack, luckily. So, and it's not as heavy as a fanny pack. But these are very nice to have with you to store if you want to bring items with you. So you also want to pack some sports gels with you during the race. Make sure you bring these along because you're, you're going to need some type of energy source besides just drinking water. So this is going to help keep your glycogen store stable. So you don't want to get depleted and feel like you're hitting the wall. So this is going to help with that and give you more energy throughout the race. So definitely bring these along with you. Another item that you might want to bring during the race is so some type of carrier for your phone. If you want to bring your phone with you, you can always put it in your gear check bag and wrap it up in your clothes so you make sure it doesn't get damaged. But you can put this on your arm, something like this on your arm. There's so many different things you can put your phone in. But here's an example of something that I've used. You can put your phone in there so you have it on you. So that's another optional thing that you can have on race day if you want to carry your phone with you. Another item that you can bring with you that I do not have personally is a hydration vest. Some people prefer to bring their own hydration vest with them, a backpack that you can put on your back that stores your water and you can just drink as you go. And some people prefer to bring their own water because some people don't want to have to rely on the race's hydration stations. Sometimes the hydration stations can get busy during the race, especially if it's a big marathon. Like if you're going to a huge marathon or a hydration vest to keep you hydrated. Here lately I've been doing smaller sized marathons, so I pretty easily get hydration pretty quickly. So another reason that why you might want a hydration vest. So when you are taking your goose, you want to take that with plenty of water. If you want to take it, the goo at a certain mile marker, you might not have a hydration station available to you. So some people like to have a hydration vest for that reason, so they can take their, goo, their gel anytime they would like. That's a reason why some people like their own hydration vest or like a running belt that stores your water. That's some reasons why some people like to have that, have to have that if you want to rely on the races hydration station. I I just like to have less stuff on me. That's why I just use the races hydration station. But any way you want to do it, there's no right or wrong answer with that. So that is just an option that you can use. So I don't have a hydration vest to show you, but you can pretty much look that up on Amazon or just Google it and you'll find hydration vests. You'll just have to do some research and talk to other runners that use those hydration or running belts to see what works for them and which ones they prefer. The next thing that you want in your race day bag, and you're not going to get this until you get to the expo, but you want to make sure that you have your race day bib and pins so you can pin on your shirt before the race. So you don't want to forget this or you're not going to get credit for running the race or you're not going to get time. So this is so important to have in your race day bag on race day. I recommend putting this on the night, probably the night before so you're not scrambling around to get it the day of. So definitely have this in your race day bag. So because you want to get credit for running the race after all doing all that hard work, you want it to count. So another thing that I recommend that you put in your race day bag, which I don't have this on me, so I can't show you what this is, but I have used it in the past is like a body glide or chapstick. So I actually ran out of this, so I don't have it on me right now. But this is going to help with chafing. So you can put it in areas that you normally chafe and that's going to really help prevent getting the, the chafing and the uncomfortableness after a race. 
So you can just put it on areas of your body that get chafed easily, or you think that might get chafed easily. So you can have that in your race day bag. You can also have chapstick in there because your lips do sometimes get dry during a race. So you can put that on before and after the race, maybe even during your race if you want to put that in your running belt. So that's another recommendation that I think you should put in your race day bag. So the next thing that I recommend that you put in your race day bag is deodorant. Make sure you put it on before the race and put it in your gear check bag after your race. You're just going to feel better to know that you're not, don't feel so stinky after the race. So make sure you for, don't forget your deodorant. The people around you will thank you if you bring this. Another item that you don't want to forget before the race is to bring your own breakfast with you. So you want to eat, sometimes it can be hard for runners to want to eat breakfast before their marathon, but you are going to have to make yourself. Your body needs the energy. Some examples that you could bring that are easy would be like bagel with peanut butter, maybe banana. You can do that before the race. Maybe some oatmeal. Like I had cliff bars during the last race and it seemed to be okay. I ate a couple of those. So those are some things that you can pack before the race because you want to be prepared before the race and not be scrambling at the last minute to get your breakfast. Because most likely, if you're staying in a hotel, you're going to be getting up earlier than what the hotel breakfast is going to serve. So bring your own breakfast. And plus, you want to know what works with you before the race because you want it to have nothing new on race day. So pack your own breakfast. The next recommendation, if you like to track your runs and you want to know your time and your distance or you're trying to calculate track your pace and see if you're on pace, bring a, a running watch. So there's all sorts of running watches you can bring. This is a Garmin watch. There's a lot of different, there's different brands in this. This is a Garmin watch and it'll just track your time, distance, and your pace. If you want to know, so this is another thing that you might want to bring during your race. You don't necessarily have to, but a lot of runners prefer having a watch. So put this in your bag. Don't forget it. If you want your race to be tracked or if you want to if you want to have it tracked on your watch so put that in your bag don't forget it make sure you bring your charging cords to it so you have plenty of charge with you so you can charge it up and make sure it's not going to die during the race another option that you might want to bring with you is some type of music so if you like to listen to music to help you get through those last few miles bring some music with you if you think it's going to help, they show that music can actually help you pick up the pace and kind of distract you from the pain during running. But I don't actually use music anymore. I feel like it's a hassle more than anything. I don't like to mess with earbuds and all that stuff. So I, and I just have, I have, I've completed now 32 marathons and I don't know, I just don't really, I like to run in peace and quiet now. I used to a long time ago. I used to think, oh, I have to have music. I couldn't get through this marathon. But that's just personal preference. You can have it or you don't have to. Some races don't really want you to run with music just because of traffic or they don't want you to get distracted and not be able to know where you're going and that sort of thing. I know some races prefer you not to have music, so you might want to ask them about those guidelines just to be safe. You don't want to get disqualified, that sort of thing. If all else fails, make sure you don't have it in your ears. When you're crossing the finish line, if you're extra worried about it, I would ask the race committee about it. If it's okay if you wear it, just to be safe. Another optional thing that you might want to have in your race day bag is a rain poncho if you know it's going to rain. Some people like to have a rain poncho. They don't really like to get the race clothes wet. I have personally never used a rain poncho, but it's an option if you want to stay dry before the race if it's raining. But that's an optional thing that you can put in your bag as well. And of course, don't forget your everyday, daily hygiene things that you would need. Make sure you bring your toothbrush and your toothpaste or any th items that you would bring when you are traveling. Maybe dental floss. Maybe bring your own shampoo or soap or anything. Don't forget extra clothes in your bag. Bring all the necessary things that you want after the race. Next thing that I recommend having in your race day bag is a change of clothes. Make sure you bring a change of clothes to put in your gear check bag after the race. Highly recommend taking advantage of gear check. There's nothing, it feels terrible to have your wet clothes on after the race. I often get really cold if I don't change my clothes. 
definitely bring a pair of clothes. I would prefer bringing some warm, nice and warm, comfortable clothes and a change of shoes, a type of drink or snack after the race because you want to get something in your body as soon as possible. After you cross the finish line, you want to make sure that you have some type of food or drink with you. I know the race will give you some, but if you know you can tolerate a certain food or drink and you want to bring it your own, you can put that in your race day bag as well. But those are some general items that I highly recommend that you bring during the race. So you can have this checklist so you make sure that you don't forget anything on race day. So download that in the link below. It's free for you to use and it's a good checklist so you make sure you're not forgetting anything on race day. Make sure you watch the next video on your screen, six marathon race day mistakes.